The University of Michigan Transplant Center serves as a common infrastructure on which we build all of our transplant programs. We've done over 2,000 liver transplants. We're one of the larger pediatric liver transplant programs, so we have a lot of experience and expertise. The University of Michigan has a long history of being a leader in liver transplantation uh, and other surgery of the liver. Uh, we have uh, always been a program that's been very comfortable with split liver transplantation, which is a uh, relatively uncommon technique to split one liver to be utilized for two recipients. We've also uh, evolved the way we do liver transplantation to try and make the operation more efficient and safer for patients. The viral hepatitis patients are still a major portion of our program and the really exciting thing about that patient group is now we have novel therapies in terms of medications that can clear them of their virus. So not only do we cure them of their cirrhosis and the complications, but also of their viral hepatitis. It was about six months after my transplant I had to come in and they told me that the hepatitis C was aggressively attacking my new liver. And so they came up with this new medication that I took. So it was really due to the good graces of the FDA and everything kind of coming together perfectly that we got the two drugs from two different companies to use in his treatment course. And much to my surprise, not only did they approve this experimental phase two drug called the Cladosphere for him back in late 2011, I actually was able to get another experimental protocol to use in combination, which was unheard of at the time. And within two months, he was ready to go back to work and feeling great. It's like I was reborn. I had a new lease on life. So we have a long-standing track record in hepatitis B in the transplant setting. And also in hepatitis C, uh, we were able to treat patients like Mr. Golston four or five years ago with these novel oral antiviral agents. And we continue to sort of push the envelope as to when you can give these agents and to which patients. We've trained a lot of people who've gone out to practice transplant surgery and transplant hepatology, and that's something we're very proud of. Our transplant program has had a long history of leadership in expanding donor organ availability both nationally and locally. We have an extensive uh, history in development of donation after cardiac death. So we were one of the first centers to use core positive livers. So as you know, a core positive liver is a donor who was exposed to hepatitis B and still has detectable core antibody. So we realized those were very good livers, they just carried a small risk of infection. Going forward, we hope to use oral antiviral agents uh, using hep C positive livers, potentially even in hep C negative patients. I think our transplant center is unique in the fact that we bring both skilled clinicians and basic scientists together. We also have teams looking at outcomes, clinical and translational research, and the dedication to really making the patient the center of our care. The work I'm most proud of here at the University of Michigan is really the team that we've created. Uh, you know, transplant is the ultimate team sport. It requires a team of uh, nurses, physicians, uh, coordinators, uh, engagement with the patient and their caregivers, and I really think we've tried to take a comprehensive approach to that. Our patients are very complex in their care needs, and if we don't have that collaboration with all the other members of our multidisciplinary team, we cannot go forth and make the best plan for our patients. Of course it's scary. None of us grew up thinking we were gonna have a liver transplant someday. You know, you wanna be an astronaut, you wanna be a fireman, but who wants to grow up and have a liver transplant? Nobody. What we do here, and I think we do it so well, is that we've got a legion of post-transplant volunteers who come faithfully to join us at our group meetings and talk about their own experience. I volunteer at U of M uh, on the intake patients when they, when they first come in and, and they, the educational part, I speak to the people about what my experience is. Uh, I'm more of a giver now than a taker. They do a fantastic job. If it wasn't for U of M, I some would think sometimes of where would I be at? I don't believe I'd be here. I really don't. I don't believe that another hospital could have did what they did for me. It is so personal to me. My life exists because of the University of Michigan Hospital.